SpaceX is always trying to expand Starship operations. Musk eventually wants to launch 1,000 rockets per year, and achieving this goal requires a lot of preparation. Although SpaceX has been developing dozens of Starship prototypes, one thing was missing. The launch towers. No matter how many rockets SpaceX builds, if there aren't enough launch towers, launches will be delayed. A single launch tower would need to be refurbished and repaired after every launch, taking up too much time. But now this is starting to change. SpaceX has been working on a second launch tower at Starbase to increase launch frequency and support Starship reusability. The most important feature of these towers is the chopstick system, a set of giant mechanical arms designed to catch returning super-heavy boosters and Starships instead of letting them land on the ground. This will allow rapid turnaround for future flights and drastically cut costs and launch preparation times. Pad A, the first tower, has already been tested, but now Pad B is entering its own testing phase. Since the installation of the chopstick system, engineers have been working steadily to reinforce and upgrade the structure to prepare it for real-world operations. The launch tower itself is an enormous steel structure, standing nearly 479 feet tall. It is equipped with multiple key systems that allow it to support launches and landings, including the chopsticks, the quick disconnect arm. These systems must all work together to secure, fuel, and eventually catch starships with extreme precision. On February 12th, a significant milestone was reached with the installation of the actuator system, which is responsible for controlling the movement of the chopstick arms. Actuators are powerful motor-driven components that provide the force and precision needed to move the arm smoothly and accurately. The chopsticks must be able to open, close, lift, lower, and rotate, all while holding the immense weight of a Starship or Super Heavy booster. These actuators are likely hydraulically powered, given the amount of force required to move such large structures quickly and safely. SpaceX has also implemented counterweight systems and stabilizers to balance the arms and prevent unnecessary stress on the structure during operation. Then, on February 17th, engineers added ramp systems, which are designed to guide and stabilize the movement of the arms. These ramps play a crucial role in ensuring that the chopsticks move evenly and without excessive strain, reducing the risk of mechanical failures. In addition, the cladding system was moved into place. The cladding is a protective outer covering for key components of the tower, shielding sensitive areas from harsh weather conditions, high winds, and the extreme heat of rocket launches. However, the most exciting breakthrough happened later that same day, when the first functional test of the chopstick system was conducted. Leading up to the test, engineers removed the tethers that had been holding the chopsticks in place since installation. These tethers were used to keep the arms locked and stable, while work was being done on the tower preventing unintended movement. With the tethers removed, the arms were finally free to move for the first time. That evening, the left arm of the chopstick system moved for the first time, marking a major step toward full operational capability. The movement was slow and deliberate, indicating that this was a careful, controlled test rather than a high-speed operational trial. Even though it was a small step, the motion was smooth and precise, proving that the joint mechanisms, actuators, and support systems were functioning correctly. Compared to Pad A, Pad B's chopsticks have been redesigned to be smaller and more efficient. In a previous interview with Everyday Astronaut, Musk explained that the new design reduces bulk while improving agility and performance. The goal is to make the catching process more precise and reliable. If these improvements work as planned, it could make Starship landings even smoother than before, reducing the chance of failure and making the entire system easier to reuse. The next tests for Pad B will involve moving the right arm, checking the lifting, lowering, and rotating functions, and conducting full-speed movement tests. One of the most important upcoming trials will be the weight pressure test, where SpaceX will attach large water bags to the chopsticks to simulate the weight of a real returning starship. These tests will show if the arms can handle the massive forces involved in catching and stabilizing the vehicle. 
Additionally, SpaceX may use test tanks to create an even more realistic simulation of the catching process. These tests will determine whether Pad B is ready for actual Starship recovery operations. The big question now is when Pad B will actually be used to catch a returning Starship for the first time. SpaceX has been gradually improving Starship's launch and landing systems, but catching a vehicle with the chopsticks is still untested. Based on the current schedule, Flight 8 is expected to launch in March, followed by Flight 9 and Flight 10 in April and May. If everything goes well, Flight 10 could be the first mission to attempt a full chopstick catch, marking a major step toward full reusability. Before this can happen, however, SpaceX needs to perfect its landing techniques. Right now, super heavy boosters are still landing in the ocean rather than returning to the launch site. This approach is being used to minimize risk while SpaceX gathers data on booster re-entry and descent. If a booster were to land incorrectly or experience a major failure, it would happen over open water rather than near critical infrastructure. However, for full reusability to become a reality, these landings must eventually transition to precise, controlled descents at the launch tower. The same applies to Starship, which must also develop accurate landing and descent capabilities to be caught by the chopstick system. Flights 8 and 9 will play a crucial role in testing these abilities. SpaceX has already gathered valuable data from previous test flights, but improvements are still needed before a full booster and ship catch attempt can be made. Flight 8 will be particularly important as it introduces several upgrades and marks another major step toward operational flights. For Flight 8, SpaceX is expected to conduct another super-heavy booster landing attempt, likely using Booster 10. Unlike previous test flights, this mission will also include a simulated payload deployment, this is a significant step forward because it mimics a real commercial launch scenario where Starship will need to deploy payloads in orbit before returning to Earth. Additionally, Flight 8 will feature important re-entry tests, focusing on heat shield improvements. During Flight 7, the heat shield suffered damage due to plasma heating and extreme re-entry conditions, leading SpaceX to redesign some of its thermal protection systems. This flight will test whether those upgrades can withstand the intense heat and forces during descent. If Flight 8 is successful, it will set the stage for Flight 9 and Flight 10. SpaceX, while making significant progress with Starship, is also facing legal battles in Texas. One of the most pressing legal disputes involves environmental lawsuits filed against SpaceX by conservation groups and local organizations. These groups argue that Starship launches and related activities are causing damage to the Boca Chica region's delicate ecosystem. The area surrounding Starbase is home to protected wildlife, which activists claim are being negatively affected by frequent launches, explosive test failures, and the construction of infrastructure. Another major issue is land use conflicts with Texas state agencies and private landowners. That's all for today's video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.